Hi and welcome back to a new video. You can see we are in the middle of nowhere. It's called Fal Falkenstein and I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, but at least for me, being from Germany and like the good old TeamSpeak days and when you were still picking servers for your games, sometimes some game servers were showing the location called Falkenstein. And that is in the eastern part of Germany and we're here. We are at our cooperation partner Hetzner, which is a data center provider and I'm yeah, very curious to see how everything here works out. We will get a tour today to see how they are building servers, how everything is set up in regards of like energy management, which is also very important nowadays considering the climate change and everything. They are also using some uh, consumer hardware like AMD Ryzen CPUs in servers, which will also hopefully give us some very interesting insights in regard of what happens if you use AMD Ryzen CPUs for a very long time for a use where they're maybe not intended to. So all of that could be interesting. And I also noticed that they're just building a new entire building. From what I can count, it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this is like the ninth building, so this is pretty massive. All right, let's just go inside and check how things look. What I was actually most interested in is to see how they manage cooling and also power supply of such a huge facility, because obviously if they have several thousand PCs or servers running, it's a very high energy and power supply required, which also takes up a lot of resources. But Hetzner is known to pay attention to those details and also try to use as much green energy as possible. Uh, has a slight touch of entering a prison with this massive door and like the barbed wire on top. Apart from the data center in Falkenstein, which we are visiting today, Hetzner has a second one in Nuremberg in the south of Germany and also one more in Helsinki in Finland. And what I find really good about Hetzner is that they're paying attention to use 100% uh, green energy. And especially in Finland, they managed to only use wind energy. So we are standing in front of the building number one. Uh, if you remember from the intro, that is the building like on the total left side. And that is the first building they established around 2008. And we will now enter the building and check out probably one of the servers out of 250,000 servers. That's quite a lot. So as I just pointed out, this is the first data center which, which was established around 2008. And if you just look at this, this is all MIDI towers, but that is mainly because Hetzner just wants to keep them running as long as they're working. As long as they're working. Um, their policy is to make sure that they're using energy and resources uh, as well as possible. And in this regard, if the hardware is still working, why would you just throw it away, right? If you still have customers that can use them, they can just keep using these systems. And it's also quite entertaining. If you just look at the systems, they have labels on the back. For example, if you just look at this label, it points out i7-3770 uh, using 4 times 8 GB of memory and like an ASUS motherboard, which is also just a consumer grade. And if we just move one PC to the right, then we can find an i7-920, which is also quite old already. So that is very, very interesting. So the cooling concept is also quite interesting because it's actually underneath me. Uh, like one meter below me, they have some air ventilation channels and they go to the sides. And those PCs are like, you, have, you always have two rows and the fronts are facing each other. And you always have the cold, in, uh, cold air intake uh, through the front. So they have the ventilation going through the bottom right here. Then it go, will go up and they will have the cold air intake uh, from the front. And then one of the technicians from Hetzner just highlighted uh, that I should not be worried about the messy cable management. And I was just looking at this, I was like, this looks like perfectly organized. I mean, they should, they should just look at my place at home. It looks completely messy compared to this. But according to their standards, this is very messy and not organized. And I'm very curious to see one of the new servers. We are now above those MIDI towers. And uh, just look at them down there. Those are 14,000 MIDI tower PCs. Obviously, this is not 2021 standards anymore. We will get to a nowadays server soon. But it's just a comparison and also for you to see the evolution they had at Hetzner uh, when it just comes to the rack design and everything. But cooling wise, um, now you can see it. If you check it from above, you can see the like cold air intake, which is this channel between the MIDI towers in the center. 
and the cold air intake is about 20 degrees Celsius and that's also a mixed air because they're mixing the cold air from outside which is about currently 15 to 16 degrees Celsius. They're mixing it with the warm air that is already inside the building. So they're not even using uh, active AC because that's maybe a misconception that I had. I always thought that data centers with this size, they always have to rely on active AC cooling, but that's not the case. They only use the AC uh, on few days per year. Because, I mean, it's Germany. In Germany isn't uh, the hottest climate. There are only a few days where you have much more than 30 degrees Celsius. So, so most time of the year, they can just rely on uh, the cold air from outside. And then they're mixing it with the ambient air in here to always make sure that the temperature in here is always 20 degrees Celsius. Well, at least down there. Because up here, due to the natural convection, it is much warmer. It's probably like 30 degrees Celsius up here. And that's also the reason why they have this angled roof. Because they rely on the convection for the cooling or, well, for the air exhaust. Right through the roof, the warm air can exit and uh, I can totally feel that. And that's. I mean, this kind of reminds me a bit of Mission Impossible. If I was Tom Cruise, I would probably climb in there, but yeah. Security levels are very high here. We just entered a different part of the area from Hetzner, and this building right here was established in 2019, roughly. And just looking at this, you can see this is completely different. No more MIDI towers, and it is warm in here. It is really, really warm. That is because we are like at the hot air outtake, like hot air exhaust area. So if we just walk up here, we, we can feel that the hot air is coming out here and uh, yeah I mean let's just go upstairs again and to get a proper impression okay so we just went upstairs again in the different data center area which is a lot newer and just looking down it kind of feels like it's it's a bit more empty than the other one uh, which could give you a wrong impression uh, one of those rows are 1400 servers and what is quite cool in this case that we can look through from the top so the top is uh, closed off with some acrylic but if we take a look through the two rows of the servers you can see the mesh on the floor and that is the cold air exhaust well that's the cold air delivery for the servers it will go up uh, between the servers and then push through and at the same time it's not only getting pushed through from the um, air conditioning or from the cooling concept itself because the air conditioning is not sw switched on as i already explained but the servers are also actively cooled so they have depending on the server configuration they have pull configuration push configuration push pull uh, because there are also a lot of epic servers down there and epic cpus depending on the cpu maybe 280 watt tdp yeah they require cooling and that is also why this kind of looks empty because the area down there where you have all those green blinking leds that is the cloud area and the cloud area has a very high power density which means that it requires a lot of energy at the same time they have to make sure that they can cover everything with the ups and yeah that is the reason why it might look empty but it's definitely not everything which you can see down there is also not the normal 19 inch rack standard because they are building their own servers they're building their own racks their own cases their own cooling concept everything is completely built in-house and developed in-house which means on first look it doesn't look like a standard but it also gives them much more flexibility Running 250,000 servers also requires a lot of storage. I mean, that's what the servers are for. And uh, sometimes some of those HEDs fail, which you can see. They're all dead and they have to be professionally recycled and obviously also get destroyed because otherwise you cannot make sure that the data would be completely erased. Obviously, 250,000 servers have to be built somewhere. And that's why we just entered the production area. Just looking at this is already quite impressive just a trace of CPUs. For example, 9900Ks, so case queues, 8700 without K. Those are for the AX61 series. That's the service we also advertised on my channel, Ryzen 9 3900. One tray, another tray underneath. I, I would like to touch things, but I tend to break things. That's why I'm not going to do it. And we have a lot of cooling equipment, the typical server heat sinks, thermal paste. Yeah. So that also shows the cooling concept of Hetzner again because they're usually relying on a pool configuration for the cooling itself just pulling out the hot air and that's why you also have those like air channels depending on the specific server like for example PX62 it's a cooling channel for Asus WSC246 okay 
So hopefully we can now go to the production area and actually see how they're building some of those servers. As I just pointed out, Hetzner also, I mean, they have their own mainboards. Those mainboards are specifically built from ASUS in this case for Hetzner. And uh, just looking at the SKU, it's a Pro WS565 ACE. Never heard about this before. I also never heard about the Pro 565 chipset, which is built on this mainboard. And this chipset, it, it's not like it's banning overclocking, but it just doesn't allow it, which is essentially the same. But um, it also makes sense that in the server, you're not allowed to overclock the CPU because it's, I mean, they're building this for a very specific like heat dissipation and cooling concept. And if you're running, in this case, it's a 5950X. If you're changing the power dissipation of the CPU, run, uh, changing the voltage and everything, it will have a huge impact on lifetime of everything, of the VRMs, of your CPU itself. And yeah, they have to make sure that everything runs reliable and runs on a very long lifetime. That's why they're using this very specific chipset. But let's just go over and check out the build process process itself. The build process of the server itself, just as the components, is also very minimalistic. You only use what you need and that's why the case itself, for example, is just a few sheets of metal. And by the way, the case itself is also 100% made in uh, Germany. And for the PSU, for example, it's also custom made to use for shorter cables to only use the resources they really need and also to make cable management much easier. Apart from that, it's almost identical to any kind of desktop build you know, just using much less components, just using as much as you really need. So this would be our server ready to go. And as you can see, everything on this is purely cooling focused. And that's also why they have this very specific layout with a different cooling configuration or cooling direction as what you would have on a desktop PC because the exhaust is on the rear on the right side with this cooling channel on top. And it will just suck the air through the heatsink and also at the same time make sure that it's also cooling the memory sticks on the side and also tries to cool the VRMs at the same time from the same direction. So everything is very efficient to cool the server with just a single fan for exhaust and at the same time cool every single relevant component. You will remember the huge pile of HDDs where we just sat on and somewhere you have to determine if those HDDs actually are damaged or if they're still in a good working condition because sometimes the customer might report that they're seeing some kind of issue within the HDD and Hetzner has to verify if that's true or not and that's what's happening right here. That's the HDD testing area. Just such an enormous amount of HDDs and uh, you have those status LEDs like right on top here, number one to seven. They're blinking in a slow pattern which means that they're in the testing condition right now. If we switch over here so number five is permanently on, which means that it passed the test. But if we go down there, you can see, for example, this HDD with this fast blinking pattern means that this is actually damaged and this one is actually also damaged. So those eventually will be replaced. Even though Hetzner pointed out that they're working on this and in, in, in their mind, this is still messy. And to me, this is like, like everything is perfectly organized. But they're still working on making it even more perfect, the organization. That's why they started uh, like 3D printing some HDD holders for their testing equipment, adding the LEDs right in the testing holder itself, and then have this like more organized. Because in, in their mind, this is not organized, but to me, this looks like perfect. This is the same area where we've been before from above. So this is the area where we have about 700 servers on this side, 700 servers on that side. So they call this the cold aisle. Basically, you have the, the cold air coming out from the floor through this mesh right here. And then the cold air goes all the way up through the servers back out. Here, the temperature is quite okay. It's about 20 degrees Celsius. If we go out back outside, it's about 28 degrees Celsius. And at that point, I also want to highlight that's actually a huge honor. And uh, I just want to th uh, thank Hetzner that we can be here, that they have the trust to put me in here because I'm well known for breaking things. And I could just rip apart, I don't know, things here and damage parts, which I obviously don't want to do. So yeah, absolutely amazing that they were so open and show everything to us and gave us the opportunity to show 
everything also to you guys out there. Right here, it's again the AX101, the server which, where we just uh, showed and watched the building process, right here with two SSDs on the side. Above we have an AX161, which is featuring an EPIC 7502P, so single socket server, EPIC. Above we have an AX41 NVMe, that's the one which we were advertising quite often in our pre-roll videos, Ryzen 5 3600, and that is compared to the MIDI towers which we saw right at the beginning, that is the most recent evolu evolution of direct design and also like also very recent hardware. In the event where you have a loss of power, then certainly you have to do something that your servers are still running. So you have those battery rooms. In, it's, just, it's just a room full of batteries. Uh, one of those cells has two volts, so you can just hook up a ton of them um, in a row. Just 120, for example, then you have 240 volts, which is still DC, so you have to convert it to AC, I guess. Not sure how exactly they're doing that. Um, or you just run it with 12 volt directly to the server, which is something you wouldn't do because it's running on 230 volt. Yeah, it wouldn't make much sense. Anyway, uh, so this is enough power to power the area which we just saw, one data center, that's the area we saw from above, for 15 minutes. Uh, yeah, 15 minutes, but that should usually never happen because you always have your emergency power generator and which is running on diesel that should run within seconds. So this will never be out of power usually. Since cooling is the most relevant part of the server itself and the entire cooling just relies on a single fan, they're also doing in-house fan testing. And the in-house fan testing is in an area where the ambient temperature is about 40 degrees Celsius, which is slightly above what you would have in the server itself. So it's tougher for the fans and those fans are running 24 seven for long durability testing. So if one of those fans or multiple will fail, they know there might be an issue with these fans and they can replace it or could replace it in the server before they are failing. And it will also have an impact on future purchase decisions. This is one of the massive fans which are pushing the air through the floor. That is really massive and especially if they're rotating fast, you can imagine it's also quite loud. We are taking a quick look inside the test lab of Hetzner because obviously they have to verify different kind of setups if new, for example, new CPU generations are entering the market. They have to check CPU mainboard memory configurations, but also if there is like an external request, for example, a customer wants to have 100 servers with a specific configuration they don't usually do, then they have to make sure it's, it's verified, everything is working. For example, on the left, they have a specific test up, setup that's only testing HDDs or SSDs. And uh, if we just continue to the right, there are multiple different setups. And this one is just running right now with some thermal testing load. So they have a thermal imaging camera right here. And this thermal imaging uh, camera is tracking the area down here of the VRMs. So it's checking if the VRMs are overheating during, let's say, Prime 95 load, for example. We also found this very interesting unit. Uh, the first look, you will just think that this is a typical server because of the like greenish PCB and everything. But let's just go to the right, where we have the same type of mainboard, but it's just not populated. The base is B550, but it's again the Pro 565, 595 uh, chipset, whatever. Uh, so it's the same chipset, which is basically blocking overclocking. But the special feature is that you can see it's a rotated socket. So EVGA is not the only mainboard company which is able to rotate a socket. You can see this one is from ASRock REC. And the reason why the socket is rotated is just a pure cooling aspect. If we move again to the left, so talking about the cooling concept, again, the cold air will just enter the server from the right side. And because the socket is rotated, the cooling can make use or utilize the full length of the cooler at the same time cool the VRMs on the right side, cool the VRMs which are sitting underneath the tunnel on the left side, and also efficiently cool the memory sticks. So that's the only reason why they had this specific mainboard uh, made, because of the rotated socket, which allows better cooling for their very specific use. The last also interesting feature inside the test lab is this thermal testing chamber, where they can increase the temperature inside the chamber. There's just some heating elements sitting inside, so they, for example, can simulate an ambient temperature of about 45 degrees Celsius, which is something you would never have in the data center, but it could theoretically happen that your AC is maybe breaking down, I don't know. And in that event, you want to make sure that your PC or your server doesn't crash. It might throttle because the CPU is overheating, but it shouldn't crash. And that's what they're testing right here with their servers. And then we also found this interesting thing, it's a 3D, 3D printed part for fan testing. 
So they're also testing the fans. We already saw the fan like reli reliability testing area. And they're also checking the fans, for example, is the advertised air volume on the fan exactly what they're also delivering? Because they also have to double check if it's like 50 square meters per hour or if it's maybe just 25. Even though Hetzner usually doesn't do water-cooled systems or water-cooled servers, we still found this piece right here. And this is for testing PSUs. Because, I mean, what else would you use than an AMD Threadripper overclocked? That can consume a ton of power and in case you want to test if your PSU can handle 600 or 700 watt load, then you can just use your AMD Threadripper system. Alright, that's the end of the video series from visiting Hetzner. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as we did. And uh, thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.